So welcome everybody. We're very happy to have Anna Lagemann from Aachen today as our speaker. She'll give a talk on tangent point energies as gamma limit of discrete tangent point energies on bi arc curves. Anna, please go ahead. Thank you very much for the uh, kind invitation introduction, Philip. Um, yes, so I'm going to talk about a joint project with he uh, Heiko von der Mosel, basically about a discretized version of tangent point energies and then showing gamma convergence. Um, before I start, please feel free to interrupt me at any time. If you have any questions, maybe just unmute yourself or indicate it and Philip may have an eye on it. Um, so you can always ask questions during the talk. Okay. So let's start with an introduction of the basically most important words that you saw in the title. And I'm going to start and telling you something about the tangent point energy. That is the so-called knot energy that was introduced in 2012 by Heiko Ponamusel and Pavel Streletsky and is defined for C1 curves as a double integral. So basically you have a double integral over the domain of the curve some integrand that depends on the points uh, of the curve and you take the line segments and you have some parameter Q that is greater or equal than two. And this integrand RTP is the so-called tangent point radius. Don't worry at this point too much uh, of the formula. Um, it, uh, it has a geometric meaning, this radius. Basically you can take any part of your curve gamma and you fix two points, gamma of S and gamma of T on your curve and the tangent line of the curve at the point gamma of S. And then there uh, exists a unique circle through those two points, gamma of S and gamma of T. And that's the so-called uh, tangent point circle. And basically you take the radius of the circle, um, take it uh, to the power minus Q and that's the integrand of this tangent point energy with some basic um, application of the Pythagorean theorem or some or any other geometric calculations, you can find this uh, formula. So you have the Euclidean distance and then the distance of the point gamma of T to the tangent line. And um, the tangent point energy has some nice properties. For instance, finite tangent point energy uh, implies self-avoidance of the curve. And it also has some regular regularizing properties. So um, it is true that uh, the tangent point energy is finite if and only if the curve is in a special fractional Sobolev space. I don't want to go into detail here, but it has some really nice properties. And the question Heiko von der Mosel and I asked ourselves um, was, can we find a suitable discretized version of those tangent point energies that converged to the continuous tangent point energy I just introduced in the sense of gamma convergence. And there is some previous work in the field of discretizing knot energies and showing gamma convergence. From the first, to our knowledge, was done by Sebastian Scholtes in 2014. He showed gamma convergence of a discrete polygonal variant of the Möbius energy, which is a different uh, knot energy, to the classic Möbius energy for C1 curves. And then later in 2019, Simon Blatt um, extended the result of Sebastian Scholtes um, to only Lipschitz curves. And basically, our goal was to um, transfer some of the results to the tangent point energy. So what do we have to do? We have to find a discretization of C1 curves that's um, applicable in our case. We have to find a discretization of the tangent point energy, and we want to show gamma convergence towards the continuous tangent point energy. And our first uh, approach was to use the same approach that Sebastian Scholtes did and try out um, discretizing the tangent point energy on polygons. But um, if you recall the definition of the energy, there are tangents of the curves involved. That's uh, the main difference to the Möbius energy. There you only evaluate um, on points of, of the curve. And um, so polygons were not good enough in our case. So we need some approximation or discretization of a curve that is C1. So we have a notion of tangencies. And the concept we came up, or not we came up, but we used are bi arcs and is in the setting of curves, so called bi arc curves. So, in the first part of this talk, I would like to give you a short introduction into the theory of bi arc and bi arc curves and how you can discretize C1 curves with this. So, um, 
the main theory and a lots of um, important uh, theorems and lemmata were um, uh, shown by Jana Smutny in her dissertation. So um, that's where um, also our work is based on. And I would like to start explaining what the bio is with a picture. So you imagine you have two points in R3. Those are the, the points Q0 and Q1. And you attach two unit tangents there. Those are the tangents T0 and T1 to those points. And then a bi arc is simply a pair of two circular arcs that are continuously joined in the middle with the so-called matching point. That's this point M. And it can look like here on the left side. So you have um, change in curvature, but it also um, can be uh, like on the picture on the right side and the curvature does not have to change. We can formalize it in that way. So we have the set of so-called point tangent data T that's simply R3 times the unit sphere in R3. And then a so-called point tangent pair is just a tuple, um, like I said, of a point and um, a tangent vector where the two points don't agree. And then a bi arc is simply a pair of circular arcs in the R3 that interpolate a point tangent pair continuously where also the tangents are continuous. And like I said, this common endpoint is called the so-called matching point. And a very natural question that arises as well, given any point tangent pair, does there exist a bi arc? Is it always possible to interpolate a given point tangent pair? And the answer is yes. Jana Smutny showed that in her dissertation. She proved that for any given point tangent pair, there always exists a bi arc. So that, is, that was good news for us. So um, any point tangent pair can be interpolated by bi arcs. But we were interested in a more restricted version um, of bi arcs. We wanted to, uh, those bi arcs to interpolate points given by a curve and to have some balancing properties. So we take a C1 curve gamma that is injected and parametrized by arc length that I always indicate with the small i and a in the subscript. And then we call a bi arc gamma interpolating and balanced if we have a small set step sites a, H and any S in the domain of the curve. And this bi arc interpolates a point tangent pair that is given by the curve. So we have two points, gamma of S, gamma of S plus H and the unit tangents at those points. This is not a restriction. We know any point tangent pair can be interpolated by a bi arc, but uh, additionally, we want to satisfy um, want the matching point to satisfy that it has the same Euclidean distance to both endpoints. So it doesn't have to be um, on the line segment um, connecting those two endpoints, but it has to have the same Euclidean distance. So the first part is the gamma interpolating part in the definition, and the second part is this uh, balance part. And then we ask ourselves, well, um, the second part is obviously a restriction. Do those gamma interpolating and balanced bi arcs ex exist? And the answer is yes, if we choose that H sufficiently small. So if we take a C1 curve and uh, the parameter H such, such, such that the modulus of continuity of the tangent of gamma uh, evaluated at H that uh, this uh, omega gamma prime here, uh, such that this is smaller than one over two, then we know that there exists such a gamma interpolating and balance by arc uh, interpolating the point tangent point pair that is given by the curve and the unit um, tangents at S and S plus H. So for any step size sufficiently small, we can find such balancing uh, by arcs. But of course we want to discretize and interpolate a whole curve and not just two points that are given by the curve. And that leads me to the definition of bi arc curves. And as you can imagine, the definition is quite easy and natural. A bi arc curve is simply a closed curve in R3 that is assembled from bi arcs from uh, in a C1 fashion, where those bi arcs now interpolate a sequence of point tangent tuples. So you have a sequence of n points and n tangents in R3 and every uh, all every two of them you join continuously with those bi arcs. And then I denote uh, the set B and tilde as the set of all closed bi arc curves that interpolate n point tangent tuples. 
And we can transfer the definition of uh, gamma interpolating and balanced bi arc to gamma interpolating and balanced bi arc curves simply by saying, well, every bi arc of the curve has to satisfy the constraints for being gamma interpolating and bi arc and balanced. And then um, the natural question that arises is well, do those interpolating uh, bi arc curves exist? And before for a bi-arc, we simply chose a parameter a, S in the domain and some step size H. And now we want to interpolate the whole curve. So we take um, a partition of R of R mod LZ, so of the domain of Z. And we are considering a certain kind of distribution, distribution uh, partitions, the so-called C1, C2 distributed partitions. So we take two positive constants and then we call a partition of the domain of the curve or a sequence of those partitions, C1, C2 distributed, if the minimum step size in the partition is larger or equal than C1 over N, and the maximum step size in the partition is smaller or equal than C2 over N. So also here you see some balancing properties. So the, the smallest distance between, between two points in the partition cannot be too small compared to the largest distance uh, between two points in the partition. And those partitions, now give us um, a, num uh, a number n of, um, of points we can interpolate. And then the following lemma is true. Again, we take a C1 curve and such a sequence of C1, C2 distributed partitions. And then if we choose n sufficiently large, we can show that there exists a gamma interpolating and balanced by our curve now. Um, from now on, they are always denoted by beta n. And they interpolate the point tangent pairs that are now given by the partition for every n. So basically, the um, for the biax we had these conditions that the h has had to be sufficiently small. This is now replaced here by n sufficiently large. Well, so we have now a bi -R curve interpolating our curve gamma. So it is a discretization because we have n points and tangents in R three. And the next question is, well, is there convergence in some sense? And I would like to talk now about the, these convergence results. So in general, the, those interpolating by our curves beta n and the curve gamma that is interpolated, they do not have the same length. So if you parameterize the sequence of by our curves and gamma by arc length, it doesn't make any sense to talk about C1 convergence because they're not defined on the same domain. But what is true is that um, the length converges to uh, the length of the bi arc curves um, converge to the length of gamma. So if we take a C1 ground curve now, so the tangent is Lipschitz continuous, and we have a sequence beta n of those gamma interpolating and balanced bi arc curves, then the quotient of the length converges to one um, as n tends to infinity. So they may not have the same length but the bi length of the bi arc curves is a good approximation for the length of the curve gamma that we started with. However, we can uh, save the C1 convergence in some sense. We can't show C1 convergence of the curves beta n to gamma, but for some reparameterized curves. And that is the following lemma. So for again, a C11 curve and a sequence of those bi arc curves, parameterized by arc length, it is possible to construct a reparameterization function phi n such that those reparameterized function um, bn, this is beta n um, evaluated at phi n, that, those uh, that that sequence bn actually converges in C1 to gamma. And Jana Smutny, she constructed that reparameterization function in her thesis. And um, we applied it here to um, the definition of our gamma interpolating and balanced by our curves. So um, it is possible to find an approximation, uh, a discrete, basically discrete version of the curve gamma that actually converges in C1 if the partition gets finer and finer. So let us quickly recall what we have done so far. So we have found a discretization for any given C11 curve by bi arc curves, and we also have suitable approximation in C1, and we also have convergence uh, of the length. What is still missing is uh, discretization of the energy now, and then to show gamma convergence of the, to those discrete energies that I will show you in a second to the continuous tension point energy. Okay, 
So first, I would like to define a slightly smaller space of Bayer curves where the discrete tangent point energy will be defined on. So just a quick remind, um, reminder that B and tilde was the space of closed Bayer curves that uh, interpolate n tangent point pairs. And from now on, I always set lambda i to be the length of the ith by arc um, from such a curve. And then I redefine the set Bn to be all uh, closed by arc curves such that the individual length of the by arcs are bounded from below by the length of the curve over 2n and from above by two times the length over n. So again, you, you kind of see a pattern. Also here is some balancing property that has to be fulfilled by the curves. Um, by those biarc curves, so also there, there can't be any biarcs where the um, length is very very small to compare to other biarcs where the length is very large. And then we can define the discrete energy. So a reminder that was the definition of the continuous energy. I just inserted the um, formula for the tangent point radius here. And then we can define a discrete version that um, I will denote by E and Q for some natural number N and Q greater or uh, equal than two for any closed C1 curve, um, basically as follows. So if this curve is a biarc curve and has this balancing properties on the length of the biarcs, we simply replace the double integral by a double sum now. And we evaluate um, the integrand exactly at the, um, at the tangent point or point tangent pairs that are interpolated by the Bayer curve. And we replace the line segments by the length of the eth and um, jth Bayer arc. And we make it easy. We just set the energy infinity if the curve is not a Bayer curve that um, is in the space Bn, because then this discrete energy is also defined on the space on C1 curves like the uh, continuous tangent point energy. And just some remarks. This energy, this discrete tangent point energy is obviously invariant under reparameterization. You see there, you only need the points that are interpolated and the length of the biarc, the parameterization does not play a role at all. That is actually the same for the continuous tangent point energy. And this discrete tangent point energy also has the same scaling behavior as the discrete tangent point energy. So you can scale the curve with a parameter alpha and this is equal to alpha to the power two minus Q times the energy of the unscaled curve for any alpha um, greater than zero. <clears throat> and then it's possible to also show a convergence result of the discrete energies. I mean, some we, we would expect that plugging in um, a gamma interpolating by our curve um, into the discrete energy, that this converges towards the continuous energy evaluated at the curve gamma that is, um, that is interpolated. And this is true if we have a, a C11 curve, again, injective and parameterized by arc length. And we have a sequence of those partitions I showed you before. And we have a sequence of those gamma interpolating and balanced by arc curves. We know that um, there exists a capital N such that for every epsilon, we have a constant that depends on epsilon such that the difference of the continuous tangent point energy evaluated at gamma and the discrete and uh, tangent point energy evaluated at that by arc curves, beta n, is smaller or equal than this constant over n to the power of one minus epsilon. So the first thing to remark is we definitely get convergence from that, but even more, we get a convergence rate um, of those discrete energies, which is nearly one over n. So you can get arbitrarily close to one over n, but you can't reach it um, exactly. And then the constant will get larger if you choose the uh, epsilon smaller. So basically the second thing from our wish list is um, also done. We have found a discretization of the tangent point energy and we've also um, seen that those discrete energies um, converge towards the, towards the continuous energy. And we can also state the explicit convergence rate. So what is um, remaining is to actually show gamma convergence of those discrete energies towards the continuous tension point energy. And I just brought you quickly the definition of, the, of gamma convergence in case anybody is not familiar with it. 
So if you have a, a metric space X, then we say that a sequence of functionals defined on the space X gamma converges to a limit functional F if we have two um, inequalities fulfilled. So if we take any X, um, small X in this metric space, the so-called limb inf inequality has to be fulfilled. That states that for any sequence that converges to this X, we have to have that the uh, f of x is small or equal than the limus inferior of fn of xn. And then on the other hand, we have the lim sub inequality that states that for every x, we have to find such a sequence, we have to find a sequence converging to x such that f of x is larger or equal than the limus superior. So the main difference is that the first inequality has to be fulfilled for any sequence converging to x, and for the second, we just have to find one. And often this is uh, called the so-called recovery sequence. And if both inequalities are fulfilled, then this uh, sequence of functionals gamma converges to F. And one of the main statements of um, our work is the following theorem. So if we take any Q strictly larger than two and L strictly larger, strictly larger than uh, zero, we know that the that we can show that the discrete tangent point energies gamma converge towards the continuous tangent point energy on the space of C1 curves that are injective and parametrized by arc length, and all the convergences are with respect to the C1 norm. And in the remaining time, I would like to show you at least sketches um, of the proofs um, of how this works. So because what we have to do, we have to prove both inequalities. And I would like to start with the infinite inequality. Usually with the proofs of gamma convergence, one inequality is kind of easy to show and the other one is a bit more difficult. And in that case, the limit inequality, the proof is quite straightforward. And we had to put a bit more work in the proof of the limb sub inequality, but you will see it in a, in a second. So the limb inequality tells us if we have a curve gamma and a sequence gamma n in C1 um, that converges in C1, then the continuous tangent point energy of gamma is smaller or equal than the limus inferior of the discrete tangent point energies of the curves gamma n. And the proof works as follows. So if, we, if the limus inferior um, on the right side is equal to infinity, the inequality is obviously true. So we can now assume that the limus inferior is um, finite. But this already tells us that this curve gamma n is actually a Bayer curve. Why is this? Um, that basically follows from the definition of the discrete energies. We set those discrete energies um, to infinity if that curve is not a, uh, not a Bayer curve and finite otherwise to this double sum. So finite energy implies, uh, finite discrete energy implies that the curve is a Bayer curve. And therefore, we know that it interpolates such a sequence of um, tangent point pairs that are given by some arc length parameters A and I um, that basically gives us the points that are interpolated. And where we can choose those arc length parameters such that the difference gives us exactly the length of the ith by arc. So recall this lambda and i is always the length um, of the ith by arc of the curve for a fixed n. And then we can define a sequence of functions for any s and t that are um, not equal. And by this l, a, and i, I denote the tangent line that is given by the um, that is given by the point and the tangent that the Bayer curve interpolate. And we simply take the double sum, the integrand of the tangent point energy, and we multiply it with a characteristic function in the end. And then um, very kind of easy calculations show that this energy converges pointwise to this function f. And if you maybe take a second closer look, this is exactly the integrand of the continuous tangent point energy. And then basically you apply the lemma of Fatou. You can write the continuous tangent point energy as the integral over this function f. And this is then smaller or equal than the limus inferior of the integral over this functions fn. And again, if you um, 
take a look at this function and if you integrate, this first part does not depend on S or T. So basically you only get the length of those intervals in the integral. And they were chosen exactly that they give you the length of the corresponding bi arcs. And this is exactly the formula of the discrete tension point energies. So basically really a simple application of Fatou's lemma yields the limb inequality in that case. The limb sub inequality was a little bit uh, more work. Basically, it, uh, the theorem states as follows. So we can take any C1 curve, again, injective and parametrized by arc length. And then there exists a sequence of C1 curves that converge in C1 and the limb sub of the discrete energies evaluated at Bn is small or equal than the tangent point energy of gamma. And then maybe, some of you uh, stumbled upon it. All the convergence statements I showed you in the beginning for bi arc curves were statements for C11 curves, not for C11, uh, not for C1 curves. But the, we want to show the gamma convergence actually in the space of C1 curves. So the idea is to approximate um, a C1 curve by, let's say, smooth functions. They are definitely in C11. So um, we can work with that. And that hope that we can um, show the limb sub inequality for those approximations and somehow also get the limb sub inequality for the curve gamma in C1 that we started with. And how do, you, how do we do this? Basically, the first step is always take a mollifier and look at the convolution of the curve with a mollifier. And that um, with that, we first make the curve, curve smooth and um, especially C11. But we want, to we want to have curves that are parametrized by arc length um, and have the right length because the convolution does not necessarily have the same length as uh, gamma has. In this case, gamma always has the length L. So as a next step, what we do, we just rescale those convolutions mm, to have the same length as gamma has. Still, they are not necessarily parametrized by arc lengths, though they are not um, in the space C infinity of injective and parametrized by arc length curve. And that's the last step we do with this um, gamma epsilon tilde. I always mean the arc length parametrization of those rescaled convolutions. And then, I mean, a natural questions, a question when talking about convolutions as well, how is the approximation? Is there a convergence? What kind of convergence? And we showed the following theorem, which is an extension of a theorem from Simon Blatt from 2019. And we showed that if you take any S between zero and one and a parameter rho between uh, one over S and infinity, and you have a curve that is in the fractional sober left space W one plus S uh, rho, then those uh, reparametrized and rescaled convolutions converge in this fractional sober left norm towards the curve gamma that we started with. And in our case, we can apply it for rho equal to q, s equal to 1 minus 1 over q. And then uh, we have convergence in w, 2 minus 1 over q, and q, s, epsilon tends to 0. And you will see in a second why we, uh, why we need this convergence. Because basically, the idea to prove the limb sub inequality is to prove it by, a, by an approximation argument. And we found the following lemma in a book from Joost and Liost from 98. That states if we have um, any metric space and a, a series of a sequence of functionals and a limit functional, and we have a sequence xk that satisfies um, first that it converges in this metric space to one towards one element x. And we have an inequality of the continuous energy. So the lima superior of f of xk is smaller or equal than f of x. So note it's different from the gamma convergence here on both sides of the inequality is the limit functional f. There is no discrete functional involved. And the third point is that for every k, the limb sub inequality is fulfilled. So basically for every k, we find a sequence xkn such that this sequence converges to the element xk 
And we have that the limb is superior of Fn of xkn is smaller or equal than f of xk. And then the statement of the uh, theorem is that then there exists a sequence that converges to x and fulfills the limb sub inequality for x. So if we can show the limb sub inequality for an approximating sequence and have some additional constraints that are fulfilled, then also the um, limb sub inequality is um, fulfilled for x. And basically the sequence yn, um, you can find by some diagonal sequence of this uh, sequence xkn. But um, I think it's a very nice, um, as theorem, um, I, I haven't seen it before. So how do we apply it in our case? Well, our metric space is the space of C1 curves that are injective and parametrized by arc length together with the um, C1 norm, norm. We have the discrete energy, we have the continuous tangent point energy defined on that space X, and we have a curve uh, gamma in this space. And this, um, sequence gamma tilde k is now a sequence of those um, rescaled and reparametrized convolutions of gamma, so they are um, smooth. And then we need to show that the sequence converges in, in C1 to the curve gamma. We want to show this um, inequality of the continuous energy. And thirdly, we want to show that the Lim sub inequality is fulfilled for those rescaled and reparametrized convolutions. If we have shown all three points, then we know that there exists a recovery sequence for the curve gamma that converges in C1 and that the limb sub inequality is actually fulfilled for gamma. And basically the first part is already done. Via this um, theorem I showed you a couple of slides ago, we know that those um, rescaled and reparametrized convolutions converge in W2 minus um, one over Q and Q, and quick application of um, Mora embedding also gives us um, C1 convergence. And also the second part is um, taken care of because it is true that the continuous tangent point energy is, uh, that the tangent point energy is continuous under W2 minus one over Q and Q convergence. For instance, Axel Wing showed this, that in his bachelor thesis in 2014. And this is exactly the reason why we need this um, slightly higher convergence and C1 convergence is not enough because the, um, this energy is only continuous under, um, under this convergence in the fractional Sobolev space. Because for the first part, it would have been enough to show C1 convergence of those convolutions. So what is missing is um, to actually show the limb sub inequality for those um, convolutions. And this is um, what we are going to do now. So basically the first part is that um, we choose um, a sequence of partitions of the domain of the curves and we make our lives easy and just choose an equidistant partition. So we take S and I to be L, I times L over N. And then we know that for every K, we find um, a sequence of Bayer curves that interpolate those um, gamma tilde case and that are bal uh, balanced and that interpolate the point tangent pairs that are given by those um, convolutions if we choose n sufficiently large. So the n, de um, basically the n depends um, on k, but this is not a problem here. And then we set this uh, lkn to be the length of those interpolating by our curves beta tilde kn. And a quick reminder, um, from the convergence part uh, from my talk, this length LKN converge for N to infinity to the length of this curve uh, gamma tilde K, but this was a, a rescaled curve to, the, to have the same length as gamma that we started with. So actually those, that sequence of length converges to L independently on, uh, of K for um, N to infinity. And then the first part and the third step is to reparametrize those functions beta tilde um, Kn to actually have C1 converge because we have to construct a sequence that converges in, T1, um, in C1 towards the convolutions. So for every K in the natural numbers, we take those that reparametrization function that uh, Jana Smutny constructed and we set 
B tilde Kn to be simply be the reparameterization of those pi R curves beta tilde Kn. And then from the um, uh, theorem we showed, um, it's true that those uh, three parameterized curves converge in C1 to the to those convolutions. But still, um, they, don't, they, they do not have the same length, um, the, the correct length by our curves, and they are not parameterized by arc length so far. So the next step is um, basically as we've done for the convolutions, we rescale those by our curves to have the right length to be in the um, right um, metric space. So we define BKN simply as the um, rescaled version of those by our curves, um, B tilde KN. And then we can simply estimate the difference of BKN and BKN tilde by um, L over LKN minus one, and that B tilde because it's just a rescaled version, and then use that the length um, that the that the length con the length of the sequence um, B tilde converges to L. So the first part um, on the right side here converges to zero. So that difference converges to zero, and then an easy application of the triangle inequalities tells us that also they, those rescaled versions now converge in C1 towards that um, uh, convolution here. So now it, those curves B, um, till, uh, B, K, N, they don't interpolate the by R curve gamma, uh, they in, don't interpolate gamma tilde K anymore because they are now rescaled but still they converge in C1. And the goal was not to find a curve that exactly interpolates um, the curve, but to find a curve that converges in C1 to the curve gamma tilde K and fulfills the Limsup inequality. And what's remaining is to reparameterize that curve BKN by arc length to be in our metric space that we defined. And um, we let beta KN to be the reparameterization by arc length. And then um, one can also show that still the, uh, the reparameterization by arc length converges in C1 towards this um, gamma tilde k. So we have found a sequence that converges in C1 that is in the correct metric space and missing is still um, the convergence of the energies. So that's uh, step four. And there we quickly recall the scaling property of the discrete energy, because basically this, this um, here, this beta tilde Kn was the curves we started with. And the next step, we reparameterized them to show C1 convergence. Then we rescaled them to the same length, L, and then we reparameterized them again. But this energy is invariant under reparameterization. So basically, we can express the energy of the curves we, we ended with. Um, by the energy of the curves we started with um, times the, the scaling factor of the energy. And this holds for all k and again, n sufficiently large. And then we can simply estimate the difference um, of the curve of the energy TPQ of gamma tilde k and of those um, approximating via curves um, beta n. And we just um, basically smuggle in the, the term the discrete energy of this curve beta tilde kn and use the triangle inequality. And the last part is quite easily taken care of. We know that this factor um, here converges to one. So the, the right, so the this side, um, this part of the sum converges to zero. And for the first part, we use the theorem on the convergence of the discrete energies because this um, sequence beta tilde we started with actually interpolated the curve uh, gamma tilde k. And one can also show that, it's in, that it is in the, the right space of pi R curves. And then we can apply the um, theorem on the convergence of the energies to also obtain that the first part here converges to zero for um, n to infinity. And this is true for every k. So basically this finishes the proof of the lim sup inequality. Um, for the for the gamma conversions part, we have, because we have shown the Limsup inequality for those approximating sequence uh, for gamma, those rescaled and reparameterized convolutions, and therefore by the application of the lemma of Joost and Joost also obtain the Limsup inequality for um, the curve gamma itself. 
Right. So let me quickly also um, tell you something about convergence of discrete almost minimizers. This is a very nice property from uh, gamma convergence that you obtain that also um, minimizes um, converge. They converge to towards the minimizer of the limit function. Not. So um, basically we take again any Q greater than two and an L greater than zero. And we can also now fix some tame not class um, and now consider the metric space we considered before. So C1 curves injective and parameterized by arc length, but we now additionally fix the not class. And then if we have a sequence of almost minimizers, so this difference here converges to zero. So this BN doesn't have to be a minimizer um, of the energy, but this um, it, has to, um, it has to become close uh, to a minimizer. And if we assume that the sequence BN converges in uh, C1 to any curve gamma, then it is true that this limit curve gamma is actually a minimizer of the continuous energy in this um, given knot class of C1 curves. And the, um, the, the value of the continuous tangent point energy is act actually the limit of the discrete energies. And it is also true that this curve is in the fraction Sobolev space W2 minus one over Q and Q. So gamma convergence also gives us um, a nice opportunity to, um, to approximate minimizers of continuous functionals. Because sometimes it could be easier to implement um, a numeric version and maybe, maybe find numeric, numeric minimizers, for instance, of this discrete version. Um, and this could give a good approximation for uh, minimizers of continuous um, energies. So let us quickly um, recall what you hopefully learned in my talk today. So it is possible to discretize uh, C11 curves by those phi R curves. Um, we have suitable approximation in C1, and we also have convergence in length. We defined a discrete version of the tangent point energy by um, some double sum in instead of a double integral and evaluating the um, integrand of the tangent point energy at those points that are interpolated by the Bayer curves. And we also have convergence and even an explicit convergence rate of those discrete energies. And in the end, I showed you um, how you can prove gamma convergence of those continuous tangent point energies on the space um, of C1 curves. And how you can also deduce convergence of discrete minimizers. Well, and that finishes my talk. I hope everybody could take something from this talk and maybe learn, learn something new. And now I'm looking forward to your questions. Yeah, Anna, thank you so much for this very inspiring talk. Are there any questions? <laughs>